Hello everyone. In this video, we will look at how to expertly solve circuits with DC voltmeter. We will see how to design the voltmeter given a desired full scale reading. We will also see how to work out the effective resistance of the voltmeter and use it to calculate the percentage error in the measured voltage. First, let's step back and look at the bigger picture. A multimeter is a measuring instrument that can measure multiple electrical properties. For instance, it can be used as a voltmeter and an ammeter to measure voltage and current respectively. If you are a first year student at a university, Chances are that you are using a digital multimeter, such as the one shown here. A digital multimeter uses digital signal processing to provide convenient features such as digital display, auto polarity, and auto ranging. If you are an electronics hobbyist, you may have come across an analog multimeter such as the one shown here. Analog multimeters use a galvanometer with a moving pointer to display the readings. A modern galvanometer is made up of a permanent magnet and a coil as shown. The coil is attached to a thin pointer that traverses a calibrated scale. The basic working principle of the galvanometer is as follows. As current flows through the coil, it generates a magnetic field. This magnetic field interacts with the magnetic field of the permanent magnet and forces the coil to twist, moving the pointer. Through careful design, the pointer deflection is made proportional to the current magnitude. Digital multimeters are widely used today and have made analog multimeters based on the galvanometer virtually obsolete. Nevertheless, in the first year engineering, digital multimeters are treated as outside the scope. Instead, first year textbooks consider analog voltmeters and analog ammeters to measure the voltage and current respectively. The block diagram of an analog voltmeter is shown here. It consists of a galvanometer coil in series with a resistor RV. The coil is characterized by both a voltage rating and a current rating. These ratings are typically in millivolts and milliamp. For example, the coil rating can be 50 millivolt and 1 milliamp. This means that when the coil is carrying 1, amp, 1 milliamp current, the voltage drop across the coil is 50 millivolts and the galvanometer pointer is deflected to its full scale position. This also means that if we were to just use the galvanometer on its own as a voltmeter, then the maximum voltage it can measure is limited to its voltage rating, which is very small. To expand the full scale range, we connect a resistor RV in series with the coil. Resistor R, V and galvanometer form a voltage divider. Thus the voltage across the voltmeter must divide between the resistor R, V and the coil. When the voltage across the voltmeter is at its full scale value, the voltage drop across the coil must be at its maximum voltage rating. 
Thus the voltage drop across RV is the full scale voltage minus the coil voltage rating. This fact can be used to work out the desired value of RV given a full scale reading. This fact can be used to work out the desired value of RV as shown here. The galvanometer resistance can be found by applying Ohm's law to the galvanometer. The effective meter resistance is given by the sum of RV and RG. This effective meter resistance of a real voltmeter is not infinite. Hence, the voltmeter adds resistance to the circuit in parallel with the circuit element whose voltage is being measured. The percentage error defined as follows gives us a measure of how much the meter disturbs the circuit in which the voltage is being measured. Let us consider a simple example. Consider a voltage divider circuit with three resistors in series. Suppose we are interested in the voltage drop across the 1 kilo ohm resistor. Using voltage division principle, it is easy to show that this voltage drop is 1 volt. In order to measure this voltage drop across the 1 kilo ohm resistor, we must connect the voltmeter in parallel with the 1 kilo ohm resistor. The voltmeter specifications are given. We can use these to determine the effective meter resistance as follows. When the voltage across the voltmeter is at its full scale reading, which is 5 volts, the voltage drop across the coil must be 50 millivolt. This can be used to work out the voltage drop across RV which can then be used to work out the resistance RV. We can find RG and also the meter resistance RM as shown. Let us consider the same problem but with a voltmeter having 150 volt full scale reading. The coil ratings are the same as before. For this meter, we can work out the meter resistance and then use it to work out the measured value. And in this case, we can see that the percentage error is less than approximately minus 1%. In other words, in this case, the measured value is more accurate. This makes intuitive sense because the effective meter resistance is 150 kilo ohm and is much much larger compared to the 1 kilo ohm resistance. Thus the meter disturbs the circuit less. Please pause the video now if you wish to study this in more detail. Next let's consider an average or standard difficulty example. We are interested in measuring the open circuit voltage as shown. Using circuit analysis, the true value can be obtained as minus 3.6 volts. To measure this open circuit voltage, we connect the voltmeter with given specifications as shown. We can analyze the voltmeter as before to obtain the effective meter resistance which comes out 300 kilo ohm. We replace the voltmeter with its effective resistance and reanalyze the circuit to show that the measured voltage is minus 3.435 volt and this translates to an approximately minus 5% measurement error.
The circuit analysis is not the main focus of this video. For the sake of completeness, the intermediate steps are shown here. The true value can be easily determined using voltage division principle. The measured value can be easily determined using node voltage method. The circuit equations are shown here. These can be solved using a calculator or Mathematica as shown here. And these calculations lead to the percentage error as shown. Please pause the video now if you wish to study the calculations in more detail. Finally, we consider a hard example. Consider the bridge circuit as shown. We are interested to measure the voltage drop across the current controlled current source. In this problem, the meter resistance is directly given. We can use any circuit analysis technique to analyze the given circuit and show that the true value is 2.7775 volts. We can replace the voltmeter by its meter resistance and reanalyze the circuit to obtain the measured value as shown. In this problem, the percentage error comes out as approximately less than minus 0.5%. Please pause the video now and do the circuit analysis for the two circuits to verify the values shown. For the sake of completeness, the node voltage circuit analysis equations and Mathematica solution for the true value is shown here. Note that in this case, a super node is involved in the solution. Similarly, we can treat the voltmeter as a 150 kilo ohm resistor connected into the circuit as shown and use node voltage method to find the measured voltage V0. In this case, because of the voltmeter, we have an additional essential node V3 in the circuit and this appears in the equations as well. Please pause the video now if you wish to study these calculations in more detail. In conclusion, in this video we have looked at how to solve circuits with DC voltmeter. Since the voltmeter is designed to measure voltage, it must be placed in parallel with the circuit element whose voltage is being measured. We have seen how to design the voltmeter and how to work out the impact of the voltmeter on the circuit being measured in terms of the percentage error. Thank you for watching this video.